Hello Year 10s. Um, this is Mrs Elliot's hand again and today I'm going to talk you through the um, chapter 3 in the Further Maths book, Exam Style Questions. Now these are mostly on um, volume area, that sort of thing. So it's page 45 of the um, uh, textbook. Here's the textbook and um, I'm just going to start sort of working through these okay so <clears throat> give your answers to a reasonable degree of accuracy i suppose you need to just sort of think about whether you're talking in centimeters meters kilometers etc um as to how accurate is reasonable um we're having a look at question one so a cylindrical hole is drilled through a cube the volume of wood removed is half of the original volume of the cube calculate the diameter of the hole so I think the first thing we need to think about then, if we're removing half of the volume of the cube, is what is the original volume of the cube. So our cube um, is um, 10 centimetres um, side length. So the volume of the cube is 10 by 10 by 10. So a thousand centimetres cubed. So the um, hole that is being drilled through it um, to remove the central cylinder is half of that volume. So volume of the cylinder is therefore going to be 500 centimetres cubed. Now we know that the volume of a cylinder is made up of the cross-sectional area of the base, which is pi r squared, multiplied by its height. So we know that that is 500 centimetres cubed in this case. We know our height because the uh, cylinder has been drilled all the way through the cube. The height is 10. So pi r squared times 10 is 500. So pi r squared is going to be 50. That means that r squared is 50 over pi and r is going to be the square root of 50 over pi. So that means that R is going to be, I'll bring that into my calculator, a square root of 50 over pi, I've got my pi button, oh, 3.989. We'll say for the moment, I'll give three decimal places just for a moment. It's probably a bit too accurate, given this is all in centimetres. But my diameter, which is what we're trying to find in this question, is, half, uh, is twice that. So 2 times 3.989. So I'm times it by 2, just on my calculator. And that's going to give me to three significant figures, 7.98 centimetres. Um, and we could say that's roughly eight centimetres. Now, I'm pretty certain that's different to the answer in the back of the book. So um, that is the actual answer. OK, we know this book isn't always right with its answers. OK, so that was uh, thinking about volumes of um, a cube, and volume of a cylinder, and just basically making sure you read the question properly, remembering to halve the volume and also at the end, remembering to find the diameter and not the radius. OK, so that's question one. I'm going to move on to question two now. So if you need to pause, just pause for a second. Question two. So here we've got a cuboid and it's got side lengths of 2A, 3A and 4A. So I think before I do anything else, because um, I haven't got a diagram to scribble over or to look at here, I'm just going to draw it. So it's got side lengths of 2A. 3a and 4a and that does just help me to um, uh, sort of visualize the question um, I'm sure that some of you wouldn't need that um, but I think some of you do need it and you just don't admit it to yourselves okay just putting it out there okay so um, volume so the volume is always going to be the um, the height times the width times the depth so 2a times 3a times 4a, 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24, don't forget those a's, a cubed. And the surface area, so just remember that you're going to be doubling up each of these sides, 
and there we go if I sort of draw it in so I've got two of those two of those on the top and the bottom so I've got two times 2a times 3a my front and my back I've got two times 2a times 4a for my sides and I've got two times uh, 3a times 4a now I know that you are probably thinking hang on a second six six a squared times two that's 12 a squared eight uh, 16 a squared and 12 24. I know you're probably thinking that was really easy. I do think it's easy just to get muddled up on these. And that's why I think a diagram really does help you sort of clarify everything. So I've got 28 plus 24. I think that's 52. 52a squared would be my surface area. OK, so relatively straightforward question. Um, and I suspect if you've drawn the diagram, you're not going to go wrong on that. Um, obviously, remember to include the letter element of it. OK, and that's why it's a grade B item. Yeah, in the book, it's not considered to be a hard one. OK, question three. So question three, the radius of a sphere is R centimetres. The value of the surface area of the sphere um, in centimetres squared is greater than the value of the volume in centimetres cubed. What does this imply about the value of R? Interesting question. So... Radius of a sphere. So what do we know about a sphere? We know the volume of a sphere. Now, in um, the further maths, you're given that on a formula sheet, um, but not for GCSE maths. So you need to learn it. Volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. And the surface area of a sphere, I can't say anything at the moment. I've lost my ability to speak during lockdown, um, surface area is 4 pi r squared. Now, what are they saying? They're saying the value of the surface area of the sphere in centimetres squared is greater than the value of the volume in centimetres cubed. So we know, we don't know what any of our numbers are, but we know that 4 pi r squared is greater than 4 thirds pi r cubed. We've got an inequality here. So using our inequality rules, which are the same as our um, rules for equations, um, we know that we can cancel the pi's from both sides. And also we could cancel r squared from both sides. Get rid of the r squared uh, there. So that would then give you um, 4 on this side is greater than 4 thirds. And you're just left with r on that side. And then the final thing, just to, um, because we are being asked about the value of r, is to divide through by 4 over 3. Dividing through by 4 over 3 is the same as multiplying by 3 over 4. That's going to give me 3 on this side. So what I do know is that r is less than 3 centimetres. I don't really like having it that way round. I like to have my letter, my unknown um, uh, variable on this side. So r is less than three, r is less than three centimetres. So that's what we know about that sphere, even though we weren't given any numbers initially. So that's just using inequalities um, and the formulae that we know for the volume and the surface area of a sphere. So that's an A-grade question. I think it's just because they want you to sort of think it through. They want you to read the question carefully and put that inequality in. Yeah. Um, as I said, if this was a GCSE question, you would have to recall the volume and surface area yourself. So you do need to know those formulae if you don't know them already. OK, I'm rubbing this one out. So if you need to pause, pause for a second. Question four. The diagram shows a trapezium. Find an expression in terms of x for the area of the trapezium um, and a circle of radius r has the same area as the trapezium. Find an expression for r. Right, OK, so we start with a. So trapezia, what do we know about them? They have one pair of parallel sides that are of different lengths to each other, because if they were the same length, then we'd have either a rectangle or a parallelogram. There we go. So those are our parallel sides and we know the perpendicular distance between them. 
Again, you need to know the formula for the area of a trapezium. So for any trapezium where these side lengths are called A and B and that height there is called H, you need to know that the area is half of the sum of those two parallel sides multiplied by the perpendicular distance between them. So in this case, our area is going to be half of A plus B. These two sides here, I'll write them out, X plus X plus 2, multiplied by the perpendicular distance between them, which is H, which is X, <laughs> which is H on this one. I really have lost the ability to speak. So here we go. We've got half of 2X plus 2 times by x, so that is x plus 1 times by x. Um, it doesn't say um, whether they want it in this form, so you could put it like that, and you could put it like that. I don't think, given that they haven't um, uh, specified what form they want it in, I don't think you could be penalised for having any of those three forms. If they said fully simplified, I think it would mean that. If they said fully factorised, it would mean one of those. Yeah. Okie dokie. And then finally, um, a circle of radius r centimetres has the same area as the um, uh, trapezium. Find an expression for r in terms of x. So circle equals trapezium, with the areas of them. Area of a circle pi r squared, area of this trapezium, x squared plus x. We want to find an um, expression for r in terms of x, so divide through by x, so you get the r squared on its own, and then you take the square root of that. And again, if you've left this in a factorised form on the top, I don't think, given the wording of the question, that they can penalise you for that. Yeah? OK, hopefully that's clear for question four. I'll crack on to question five. So again, if you need to take a note, pause for a second there. OK, question five. Calculate the volume of a pyramid um, having a square base of side nine centimetres and a vertical height of 10 centimetres. So, quick sketch. Again, some of you won't need it. Um, I'm going to put my height here. Height equals 10. There we go. Okay, so my pyramid. <clears throat> um, uh, you may remember when we talked in class, we talked about the fact that anything that ends in a point, whether it's a pyramid or a cone, has a third of the area of the either cuboid um, or um, prism or what's the word cylinder um, uh, of the same uh, base. So basically in this case because we've got a square base here our um, area of our pyramid is going to be a third of the area of a cuboid with side lengths 9, 9 and 10. Yeah, so one third of 9 times 9 times 10. Yeah, so remember that rule, it's always for anything that ends in a point, one third of the volume of the corresponding cylinder or prism. Okay, so here we go, we've got one third of um, 810, 9 nines are 81, yeah, one third of 810. And so we've got a uh, third of 81 is 27, isn't it? So that's going to be 270, um, are we in centimetres here? Yes, we are, centimetres cubed. Uh, I can see some of you probably screaming at me from the previous question, I've just looked at it, the X and the X plus two, you're probably screaming at me that there should have been some centimetres um, squared written on that, you're probably right. OK, there you go, gents. So um, nice, easy one, just as a reminder of how you work out the areas of anything that has a point at the top of it. OK, question six. So, 
question six. With this time we've got a pyramid and it's got the same volume as a, of a, as a cube of side 10 centimetres. Calculate the height of the pyramid. The height of the pyramid is the same as the length of the side of the square base. Calculate the height of the pyramid. Okie dokie. So we know that our pyramid, so square base pyramid, not the best one in the world, and it's also got a height of x. Okay, so we know that the uh, volume of our pyramid is one third times the dimensions of the base multiplied by the height, which in this case is also a third, um, an x. And we know that that is equal to the uh, volume of a cube of side 10. So 10 times 10 times 10. Yeah, so that means one third of x cubed equals 1000. So that means x cubed is 3000. So that means that x is the cube root of 3000. I've absolutely no idea what that is. So I will just bung that into my calculator. Cube root of 3000. More than 10, less than um, 20, I'm guessing. Oh, I can't even find the cube root button on my calculator. Oh, there it is. Exception. It's just as well you're not actually seeing me do this. Now I've put the square root button on. Oh, it's it's a worry. Um, there we go. Three thousand. Fourteen point. How many says this is in centimeters? And I'll go to one decimal place. Three significant figures. Fourteen point four centimeters. There. Okay. And then finally, question seven. I think it is the last one on this. It is. Come on, question seven. Um, we're going to talk about um, some uh, a, bar, a steel bar by the looks of it. Everybody happy with this? Hopefully you are. Okay, number seven then. The volume of a piece of steel, 30 centimetres cubed. How many ball bearings with a diameter of three millimetres can be made from this? Okay, so we've got a ball bearing diameter equals three millimeters. Diameter, okie dokie. Um, and so my uh, radius of a ball bearing is gonna be 1.5 millimeters. Now what I think we ought to just clarify on this question is that we haven't got a steel bar of volume 30 centimeters cubed that we're trying to squeeze ball bearings into we're assuming we can melt this down and use all of that volume to make ball bearings yeah we're not doing they sometimes say if you've got a box or a, um you know one of those tubes that you put tennis balls in or something you're trying to fit them in we're not trying to do that definitely not we are trying to melt down our um, uh, bar of steel and we're using all of the steel to make ball bearings. So we want volume of one ball bearing. And I think what we probably ought to do here is decide what we're going to use, whether we're going to use millimetres or centimetres. I've just realised that these are in um, different um, units. I think I'm going to make my volumes, I'm going to make everything into millimetres. I would rather deal with big numbers than very small numbers. Just a personal preference there. So 30 centimetres cubed is going to be 30 times 10 times 10 times 10 millimetres cubed, which is going to be 30,000 millimetres cubed. OK, and then volume of uh, the ball bearing, volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, so it's going to be four thirds times pi times 1.5 cubed. So four thirds times, let's see if I can do a better job of this on my calculator this time, four over three 
times pi times 1.5 cubed. I've got 9 over 2 pi. Um, which is 14.137 uh, millimetres cubed. I think I'll just leave it as 9 over 2 pi because I've got loads of decimal places here. But I have kept this in my calculator. In my calculator, okay? Right, okay, so number of ball bearings then is going to be 30,000 divided by 9 over 2 pi, which is sitting in my calculator. So using the answer button, 30,000 divided by my answer from last time, I've got 2122.06. Obviously, I can't have 0 0.06 ball, ball, ball bearing, so 2122 ball bearings. And I think that's different to the answer in the back of the book, but I think I've got that right. Okay, gents, so that's those questions. Don't forget, if you've got any more queries, if you're not sure about any of them, you can play this again. Um, you can pause it at any point, but also just remember that um, you can always send me an email as well. Okay.